Our subject today is the bath party in Iraq. Isn't the bath party like a party in the bath? <laughs> no, it has nothing to do with cleansing. <laughs> the bath party promoted its ideology of pan-Arab peculiar nationalism with socialist leanings, which means the Arab Socialist Party in Iraq region, officially the Iraq regional branch, is an Iraqi Baathist political party founded in 1951 by Fahd al-Rakabi. The Baath movement in one, in one country was considered merely an aspect of, or a phrase, leading to a unified democratic socialist Arab nation. The principles of the Baath party embraced were unity, freedom, and socialism. Just finished talking about the ideology of the Ba'ath Party. Now let's talk about the objectives and roles. In the 1950s, the Ba'ath Party remained underground. The Ba'ath joined other opposition parties to form the United National Front and participated in the activities that led to the 1958 revolution, ending the British control of Iraq. The new Republican government that came in did not favor pan-Arab causes or other Ba'ath principles. But a young mem party member that we will discuss later, Saddam Hussein, became convinced that the Iraq leader, ABD al karim Qasim, had to be ousted. The U.S. Central Intelligence Agency is to believe to have backed the plot to assassinate him. Their first attack on Qasim failed in 1959. Saddam and one of the assistants fled Iraq while the other party members were arrested and tried for treason. The second attempt to overthrow Qasim was successful and brought the Ba'athists to power for the first time. Even though the Ba'athists came to power, it was not until 1965 that the Ba'ath overcame its ideological and personal rivalries. The party was then ruled by the direction of General al Bakr as Secretary General with Saddam as his deputy. On July 1968, the Ba'ath finally staged a successful coup and al Bakr became the first Ba'athist president of Iraq. We just finished discussing the objectives and roles of the Ba'ath Party. Now let's discuss the new values and principles. The Ba'ath Party tried using political campaigns to attempt to create a stronger and unified Iraq. The campaign that tried to eradicate was called Harmful Pre-Revolutionary Values and Practices. Official statements called for the abandonment of traditional ways in favor of a new lifestyle based on the, princ on the principles of patriotism, yeah. national loyalty, collectivism, participation, selflessness, love of labor, and civic responsibility. Those that were listed were the adopted goals by 1968, and by the late 1980s, the party has succeeded in socializing significant economic sectors including agriculture, commerce, uh, industries, and oil. Take it over to Maya to see about how the Ba'ath Party started in Iraq. Another name for the Ba'ath Party was the Arab Socialist Party. The party was founded in Iraq in 1951. The party came to power through coups from 1963 through 1968. The Ba'ath Party was in charge of Iraq. I am now going to talk about how Saddam Hussein came to power. Saddam Hussein joined the party in 1957 when he was only 20 years old. When he first started off, he was at a low ranking, like everyone else. In 1959, he was asked to be a part of the assassination squad. The assassination squad was asked to kill the Prime Minister of Iraq so the Ba'ath Party could be in charge of Iraq. However, they failed to do so, and now Saddam Hussein was wanted by the Iraqi government. He then fled to exile in Syria for three months, then moved to Egypt. In 1963, the Ba'ath Party overthrew Iraq, so now Saddam Hussein can come back to Iraq. 
He then became the vice president of the Ba'ath Party. He finally became the president in July 16, 1976, when the former president resigned. He only became the president because he was the vice president when the former president resigned. Saddam Hussein dropped poison gas over the Kurds off a plane. This was one of the bad things Saddam Hussein did as the president or dictator of Iraq. Doing so, he killed about 5,000 Kurds. On March 16, 1988, he ordered Iraqi troops to release gas over the northern town of Fubanja. This town had more than 40,000 people. The gas that was released over the town was a mixture of toxic gases. About 5,000 Iraqi Kurds were killed and they were mostly all women and children. The reason why they were all women or children was because the men fled to the hillside of the town. Now I'm going to talk about the role that Saddam Hussein played during the Persian Gulf War in the Iran and Iraq. The Persian Gulf War all started with the Iran and Iraq War. Saddam Hussein led Iraq during the Iran and Iraq War. The war lasted from 1980 to 1988. This was a two-year war. Saddam decided to invade Iran because of the waterway, which is the boundary between Iran and Iraq. The war officially started when Iraq invaded Iran. On September 22, 1980. However, during the Iran and Iraq War, Kuwait was providing financial support to Iraq from 1982 to 1983, so about a year. Iraq then had to owe Kuwait about $14 billion. However, Iraq's major point, Basra, was destroyed, so Iraq wasn't able to pay back Kuwait. Iraq then asked Kuwait for loan forgiveness because they thought the war also benefited Kuwait as much as it benefited them. However, Kuwait was not willing to forgive the loan. Both Kuwait and Iraq's head leader met several times in 1989, but they never reached an agreement. This led to the start of the Persian Gulf War. The reason why the Persian Gulf War started was because Iraq increased their oil prices, but Kuwait increased their oil production. Since Kuwait had so much oil production, they could increase the prices as well. But Iraq prices couldn't be increased, and Iraq continued to suffer. When Iraq invaded Kuwait, Iraqi control of 20% of the global oil supply. So now they had a larger part of the gold and they can gain more money to pay back Kuwait. When Saddam ordered Iraqi troops to take control of Kuwait in 1990, the United States then defended Kuwait. Then on March 19, 2003, the United States attacked Iraq. And Saddam Hussein fled to Baghdad. And Saddam was found hiding on December 13, 2003. He was then captured in the United States and he was sent to trial and was sentenced to death for all the crimes he did. And was then executed on December 30, 2006. Now we're coming to the end of our discussion about the Ba'ath Party. Let's talk a little bit more about how Saddam affected the Ba'ath Party and how the Ba'ath Party came towards the end. Six days after Saddam was declared president at a meeting of the Revolutionary Command Council on July 22, 1979, read a list of enemies of the state. He ordered the execution of at least 22 of them within 21 hours of their names being read. Saddam enacted reforms that lent him some credibility. They include universal free schooling up to the highest education levels, not only for Iraqis, but for Arab nationals, making Saddam even more popular regionally. 
soon, Saddam's war monitoring started to dampen the Ba'ath Party's appeal. The death tolls from wars and sanctions left many Iraqis desperate and angry. Now we're coming to an end and we're going to talk about the overall summary of the Ba'athist Party in Iraq. The Ba'athist Iraq. Formally, the Iraqi Republic covers the history of Iraq between 1968 and 2003. During this period of time, the Arab Socialist Ba'ath Party ruled. This period began with high economic growth and soaring prosperity, but ended with Iraq facing social, political, and economic stagnation. 